Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Ninovich and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Today I'll be talking about deepfakes. I'll be providing examples of deepfakes and how to detect them using open source intelligence tools and techniques. We're seeing a lot of deepfakes currently in the public domain and this may continue and I think it's an important topic to talk about. So a little bit about me. I have experience investigating fraudulent activity and threats online. I have a blog and a Twitter with the handle Intel Inquirer, where I post about OSINT, SOCMINT and intelligence analysis. And I was also a guest blogger at OSINT Curious earlier this year, which was really exciting. So what are deep fakes? Deep fakes are videos of a person appearing to say or do something that they never did using artificial intelligence to create these. These include face swapping, cloning a video, and lip syncing to a different audio. And we've seen a range of quality of deep fakes from Snapchat as pictured here to Hollywood productions. And the aim is to make it look as legitimate as possible. It's important to note that the Widespread use of deepfakes has been non-consensual pornographic material targeting women in particular. And in 2019, there was a statistic stating that 95% of all deepfakes were of this nature. So there is an assumption that all deepfakes are bad and nothing good can come from it. But in reality, that is not the case. Deepfakes aren't all bad. It's been used for witness protection, for example, in documentaries, for humor and for art. And here is an example of a deepfake of Tom Cruise through the TikTok handle Deep Tom Cruise. This is a high quality deepfake and it was created by Chris Ume. It took him about two to three months to create a deep fake of this quality by inputting hundreds of videos and photos of Tom Cruise into the computer to generate these. We're also seeing an increase of deep fakes becoming commercialized with businesses advocating for deep fakes for advertisements, for example, featuring celebrities. And we're seeing a lot of deep fakes featuring celebrities also. Deepfakes have been used for elections. So in 2020, an Indian politician used deepfakes in order to appear to speak in three different languages, in order to appeal to people in different regions, when in reality, he could only speak the one language. And more recently, in March 2022, we saw a South Korean politician use deepfakes in order to appeal to the younger generation for advocating for things like K-pop, which is something that individual I don't think has a major interest in. So shallow fakes and cheap fakes are videos that have been edited using really basic tools and techniques like Photoshop and Adobe. Techniques include editing a background of a video, adding something to a video or removing something, changing the speed, chopping and changing different videos into one, and these kinds of edits can take about five to 10 minutes to do. And this is why it's becoming increasingly popular because if you compare that to things like deep bags, which with that Tom Cruise example, there was about two to three months of work to create something of that quality. Whereas a cheap bag, which takes about five minutes to create can have just as much of an effect if uploaded miscontextualized. So here we have two examples. In 2019, Nancy Pelosi, who is an American politician, was seen speaking slowly, incoherent, and almost in a drunk light state. When in reality, the original video was slowed down dramatically in order to create this effect. In 2020, we also saw a video of Joe Biden apparently snoring very loudly in a live press conference. The reality was, this was two different interviews merged in together and uploaded with a audio sound of someone snoring to create this effect. And in reality, that wasn't the case. And we're also seeing an increase of videos with live news banners at the bottom or with a news logo to make it seem like the news uploaded this when in reality, they never did. 
So it's all about this miscontextualization and it's becoming increasingly popular. So GAN stands for General Advisory Network, and this is a technology using artificial intelligence to create images of individuals who do not exist. Pictured here are several individuals from the website thispersondoesnotexist.com, and every time you refresh this page, it, up, it creates a new image of an individual that it provides to you. And as you can see, there are various ages as well. The technology has improved dramatically throughout the last five to 10 years. So OSINT analysts use these kinds of GAN images for sock puppets, which is another term for fake accounts. When we do social media analysis and create fake social media profiles. And this is also one way to bypass any kind of security hurdles that may pop up. I know recently Instagram as well, has stated that they require a video upload or an image upload of a face to verify that it's you. And this is one way that we do that. But it's also used for bad. So scam artists use these kinds of images to make their business seem more legitimate or their profile also on Facebook Marketplace, for example. And we're also seeing an increase in bot syndicates and spam syndicates also. This is where hundreds of social media profiles are created for one particular agenda in order to spread misinformation and disinformation online. And as you can see here, pictured are several social media profiles of individuals who don't actually exist. They're just fake accounts in order to promote whatever agenda they may have. I know that Hatless Wonder also wrote a great blog about this and I've linked it in the resources tab. And we're also seeing on LinkedIn, um, individuals with fake profiles target people within the intelligence community in order to extract information that way. So to detect deep fakes, it's not an easy task and there's no one size fits all solution. However, I think a really good first step is knowing that deep fakes do exist and knowing the quality that currently exists right now. And that's a really good first step because when you do see videos or images that can become of your, that, that, that can become a thought process, whether it's real and whether it's a deep fake. I think in OSINT, there is a huge emphasis on tools. There are so many tools in the OSINT space it's almost hard to keep up. However, OSINT is so much more than just tools. It's also about the intelligence aspect also. And it's important to note that information needs to be transformed into intelligence. And the way to do that is ask questions like who, what, when, where, and why, corroborating your findings, looking at any other leads, being critical about what you find online. And this needs to transcend into the deep fake world as well as they become more apparent in the public domain. I'd also like to bring light the tool Deepware AI, which is an open source tool that is free to use, which claims to detect deep fakes. However, I would use it with a grain of salt. The tool itself has a disclaimer stating that it cannot be used for evidence, so it's not 100% accurate. And I have an example here of a really badly done deep fake of Jacinta Ardern in a Hollywood movie. And as you can see here, there was one model that actually didn't even detect a deep fake, so it's something to keep in mind. And also, deep fakes are a big cat and mouse game. I know in the beginning when deep fakes first emerged, researchers noted that they weren't blinking, which is really exciting. They wrote a research paper about it. And then a couple of months later, deep fakes started to blink. So this is important to keep in mind. And the tools that we do use need to adapt and evolve with the evolving nature of deep fakes also. Investigating the source is another key component of detecting whether something is a deep fake. Doing a background check on the individual who posted the image or video is really important to see whether, whether they are credible. So for example, if you do have a person, you can Google their name, see if they have a digital footprint, see if they have other social media profiles and determine whether they're even real. Have a look at the display picture. Is it a GAN image, possibly? Or is it a real person? 
have a look at what they've posted in the past. Does it cooperate with what they're posting now or is it completely different? Also, have a look at their credible, are they a journalist? And I think it's really important to ask these kinds of questions and delve deeper into the individual. Have a look at when that profile was created. Was it created two days ago? And if so, why that may be? Was there a recent worldwide event where they may have an agenda? This is going into the bot syndicates and spam syndicates that we're seeing a lot of as well. Trying to locate the original video, video or image is also really important. You can do this by doing a reverse image search of a video. For a video, you can just do a screenshot and upload that. But it's good to note that there are various different platforms that offer reverse image searching. It's not just Google. There's also Google Lens, there's Yandex, there's Bing, there's TinEye, there's various different sources and these can generate different results as well. So sometimes it's good to play around and see what kind of results you get and analyze the results that you get. Is it a video from 2011, but claiming that it happened two days ago? This kind of miscontextualization that we're seeing a lot of with shallow fakes and cheap fakes is something to keep in mind and comparing that with what the video that you currently have. Geolocation may also assist, especially with the miscontextualization again. And again, reverse image searches can help with the geolocation process. Investigating the content is another great technique. I think it's really good and worthwhile to take a step back, watch the video and ask yourself, is it plausible? So for example, that cheap fake of Joe Biden snoring in an interview, is it plausible and is it possible that Joe Biden was snoring loudly in an interview? Probably not. So these are the kinds of questions you need to ask yourself. I'd also like to bring note to the tool FFMPEG, which can turn all frames of video into image files. This is a command line tool. And I know that Nick Sintel wrote a great blog about this. And essentially it's a great way to find the best image to do a reverse image search, especially for geolocation, for example, if you are watching a video and you try and pause it, and find the perfect still, that might be a bit difficult. So this is one way to do that. It can also help to investigate the content a bit more, having a closer look at the video, look for any inconsistencies or irregularities that may indicate that it's a deep fake. So for example, this image of Tom Cruise, as you can see, the glasses have disappeared halfway, which may be an indication that it's a deep fake, um, something like that can't really happen in real life. So that's something to think about also. And this tool also extracts audio from a video, which you can then listen to at face value and determine whether it sounds like the victim of that deep fake. And we're seeing a lot more um, audio deep fakes also. And I think it's really good to test your knowledge. I'm a firm believer of practice makes perfect. And there's a website called Detect Fakes, which allows you to practice and determine whether something is real or fake. And it also has audios as well, which I thought was really handy. So to determine GAN images, these images of fake people who don't exist, there is a fake profile detector, which was recently brought to light. It is a Google Chrome extension, and it claims to detect deep fake images. It's important to note that this tool is particularly accurate for images from the website thispersonsdoesnotexist.com. However, there are other websites out there that allow you to generate images of individuals who don't exist. And this tool may not be as helpful for other types of websites. So that's something to keep in mind and trying to corroborate the findings of this tool with anything else that you can find would be helpful. I think doing a reverse image search of a GAN image or a potential GAN image, image may be helpful also, especially with the rise of bot syndicates where they are using GAN images for hundreds of profiles. It is every possibility that it may have been used for two different profiles as pictured here. You've got a Jacobs and you've got a Duncan with the same profile image. That's a key way to note. It probably is an individual who doesn't exist. 
Also, attention to detail may be really helpful, and I'm going to go through this in a moment. So I spent about half an hour to 45 minutes on the website thispersondoesnotexist.com, and I looked for any irregularities or things that looked a bit odd or not human-like, but it's important to note that this technology is constantly evolving, and the key things that I found may not be relevant in a month's time if this technology evolves. So this is something to take note of with every technique that you use for investigating these deep fakes. Um, it is an evolving technology. So here, for example, we've got mismatched earrings, uh, ears or ears that look a bit odd. We've got here pupils that aren't exactly circular. We've got mismatched earrings or missing earrings, which is a fashion trend I personally have not seen before. And we've got glasses that don't exactly align or don't look, don't look real. We've also got um, a picture from a tweet from Ben Do Brown, who stated that the eye is perfectly aligned for all types of style again, images that you see, for example, on thispersonsdoesnotexist.com. And this is great if you are investigating things like um, bot syndicates and spam syndicates also. And practice makes perfect. There is a website called Which Face is Real, which allows you to determine whether an image is of a real person or a fake person. And the more exposure you get, the more practice you get, the better you'll be as well at understanding what to look for. Future implications. So currently there are a lot of intelligence gaps for OSIN analysts when it comes to detecting deep fakes. Currently, there is no open source tool that can 100% accurately determine a deep fake, which is a major intelligence gap. This means that it will take a lot of time for us to investigate deep fakes and corroborate our findings. And also Sam Gregory, who is an expert in deep fakes, has stated that there is currently no reverse video search option available. We've only got the reverse image search. And I think that's really handy if it was possible to download a video, upload it onto Google and see where else it's been posted and look for that miscontextualization or any kind of manipulation that's been done to the video. As well as the fact that when you do upload a video or photo onto social media, most social media platforms erase metadata. And this is the kind of thing that could be helpful for us, especially in terms of geolocation of a video and also the manipulation also. Nina Schick, who is an expert in deep fakes, has stated that in about five to seven years, anyone will be able to create a deep fake. And this is problematic. This means that anyone may be a deep fake victim in the future, and we may see more of these in the public domain. I think currently we're seeing OSINT being known for its fact checking, especially with the miscontextualization of videos and images in worldwide events currently. And this may only continue. And with that, we need to expand our skill set, expand our knowledge and our horizons to include things like media forensic skills and digital forensic skills as deep fakes become more popular or more in the public domain and something that is really worth considering in our OSINT investigations also. And here is a list of resources that I used for my research that may be helpful for you also. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much, Sans, for the opportunity, and I hope you enjoyed my talk.